Finally, two tech gods, Elon Musk SpaceX and Google, have partnered to create an unimaginably big change for all mankind. What exactly are the two giants up to? How big is the project? How significant is this project to humans? Let's find out all about it in today's episode of Alpha Tech. Elon Musk is an entrepreneur who's best known in the world for launching SpaceX, a private aerospace design and manufacturing company. His company became the first private one to ship cargo to the International Space Station back in 2012. Among SpaceX's many accomplishments is the development of a self-landing version of the Falcon 9 rocket, a heavy lift rocket called the Falcon Heavy, and the Crew Dragon, a crewed spaceship that became the first private crewed spacecraft to reach the ISS in 2020. Since the rocket's debut in 2010, SpaceX has chalked up 194 Falcon 9 launches overall, 198 including four triple-core Falcon Heavies, putting together a string of 179 straight successful flights since the company's only in-flight failure from 2015. Moreover, a longtime advocate of Mars exploration, Musk has publicly talked about ventures such as building a greenhouse on the red planet and more ambitiously, establishing a Mars colony with a monster, Starship. But another important part of SpaceX we rarely talk about is Starlink. This is an expansive satellite internet network in space. The first Starlink satellites were launched on SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket in May of 2019. More than 3,000 Starlink satellites enveloped the Earth, offering broadband connectivity to users, especially in rural areas without fixed-line connections. The goal is to have up to 42,000 satellites by mid-2027. Musk said in September that SpaceX had manufactured more than 1 million Starlink user terminals, which connect to the company's satellites in orbit. In December 2021, the company hit another milestone, gaining 1 million active users. However, Starlink is still losing money, according to a tweet from Musk in response to a Twitter thread that referenced CNN's report about SpaceX asking the Pentagon to foot the bill for the service in the Ukraine. So SpaceX needs to develop Starlink much more powerfully, and that's why they have shaken hands with technology giant Google in developing satellite broadband. They collaborate to set up the infrastructure needed to deliver high-speed data to businesses, including secure access to the cloud and broadband internet infrastructure. Under the partnership, SpaceX will build Starlink ground stations with Google Data Center properties. The ground stations will be connected to Google's fiber optic network to enable secure, low latency delivery of data for more than 1,500 Starlink satellites launched to orbit that could provide service to rural and remote locations via Google Cloud. To date, SpaceX has launched over 1,700 internet beaming Starlink satellites to low Earth orbit out of over 12,000 that will be part of the broadband constellation. The company's already providing beta service to customers in the U.S. and abroad. Google data centers will help SpaceX's Starlink network enable internet and cloud service around the world in any location, including remote areas. Organizations with broad footprints like public sector agencies, businesses with presences at the network edge, or those operating in rural or remote areas often require access to applications running in the cloud or to cloud services like analytics, artificial intelligence, or machine learning. Google reps have said that connectivity from Starlink's constellation of low Earth orbit satellites provides a path for these organizations to deliver data and applications to teams distributed across countries and continents quickly and securely. The deal represents a victory for Google as it works to take a share from Amazon and Microsoft in the fast-growing cloud computing market. Investors are counting on Google's nascent cloud business to boost growth in the event that its advertising business slows down. While Google's cloud business delivered only 7% of parent company Alphabet's total revenue in the first quarter, it grew almost 46% year over year, compared with a growth of 32% for Google advertising services. Well, you may see this also as an unusual type of deal for Google or any other cloud provider, as it relies heavily on Google's internal network that connects data centers rather than simply outsourcing functions like computing power or data storage to the data centers. So why did Google decide to break this rule? 
Akash Kohli, Google's head of global networking, said this is one of a kind. I don't believe something like this has been done before. The real potential of this technology became very obvious. The power of combining cloud with universal secure connectivity is a very powerful combination. Thomas Curian, CEO of Google's Cloud Group, said they chose us because of the quality of our network and the distribution and reach of our network. Amazon popularized the public cloud business with the launch in 2006 of general purpose computing and storage tools from its Amazon Web Services division. Google introduced its own computing service in 2012, but over the last two decades, Google has also spent money assembling a private fiber optic network to connect its data centers. While much of Google's cloud growth has come from taking care of computing and storage needs for clients such as Goldman Sachs and Snap, the SpaceX deal will draw heavily on Google's networking ability. Cloud providers have increasingly focused on the telecommunication industry, particularly with the ascent of 5G connectivity. Previously, for example, Amazon said DISH would use AWS infrastructure to deliver 5G service to consumers. In SpaceX's case, there's no need for cell towers. Instead, customers' devices would communicate with satellites. Then the satellites will link up to Google data centers. Inside those data centers, customers can run applications quickly using Google Cloud services, or they can send the information to other company services that are geographically nearby, enabling low latency so there's minimal lag. Data then comes right back through the Google data center to the satellite and then down to the end user. This deal could last seven years, according to a person who declined to be named, discussing confidential terms. Starlink's service might be valuable for consumers living in places with limited internet access, as well as businesses and government organizations running projects in remote areas, Kurian said. He anticipates that having Starlink draw on Google's cloud network will lead organizations to deploy applications inside Google's cloud to take advantage of high speeds. In addition, SpaceX is upgrading its Starlink gear. They're adding laser terminals on all future Starlink satellites. In 2021, they launched 51 Starlink satellites, which is the first whole batch of laser-equipped satellites. These SpaceX lasers are expected to improve how the satellite network relays broadband signal around the world. These will enable the network to operate with fewer ground stations. They'll route data around the constellation rather than between Earth and space. Fewer hops between the ground and orbit reduce the time it takes for a signal to travel between destinations. The goal is to provide Starlink patrons with improved latency. Wow, this is a huge leap forward in tech. Unfortunately, what the laser-equipped satellites did not do is address the ever-concerning controversy that Starlink is problematically bright. Light pollution, as astronomers might call it, can cause problems for them as thousands of styling satellites would effectively make astronomical images useless by leaving long, luminous trails. Musk, however, dismissed those worries and said that he would paint the satellites black if needed to facilitate their job, as he is a man of science. Another concern raised by some is that of a collision in space, which the company's trying to prevent. Shotwell was quoted as saying, this Starlink employs autonomous collision avoidance technology, adding that the worst thing in the world is to have a collision. Amidst all concern about the privatization of the cosmos and traffic jams in space, Musk isn't stopping as of now and shows no inclination to do that as he always soars high. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Don't forget, share your ideas in the comment section. Everyone's support motivates us to create more quality video. And for that, we thank you so much and hope to see you next time.